you can lower your risk of cancer through your food. If you have a family history of cancer, a genetic predisposition, or if you yourself have a history of cancer, then this video is a must watch for you. Here are my top seven foods that fight cancer. Starting with raspberries. Raspberries are one of my favorite cancer fighting foods. Here's why. They are surprisingly high in fiber. In cultures that eat higher fiber levels, they're known to have lower cancer rates. You want that benefit too, so up your fiber intake. Of course, there are lots of great foods that are high in fiber, but raspberries are delicious and surprisingly high in fiber per serving. Keep this in mind because it's actually gonna tie into the last food on my list later in this video. This food is going to surprise you of how well it fights cancer. Raspberries are also loaded with antioxidants, and here's why antioxidants are so important. Every day our body is under oxidative stress. Just being in our environment every day, our body is producing free radicals and under oxidative stress. Now, free radicals are dangerous in terms of your cancer risk because they can start creating cancer on a cellular level. If you're continuously exposed to oxidative stress, then it's time to repair the damage. The good news is that what you eat can dramatically lower your free radicals and reduce your cancer risk. Foods that are high in antioxidants work to remove or neutralize free radicals. They work to protect your body. It's amazing that you can literally use foods like berries on a daily basis to fight off cancer. They help your body repair and fight off those cancer cells. Berries are also really convenient. You can add them to yogurt, to cereal, or just enjoy them on their own. You can also get fresh varieties, or if you're in a pinch, use frozen varieties, so you have a lot of options. The best place to start with fighting off cancer is with your food. Through your food alone, you can considerably lower your risk of cancer. Okay, but I'm gonna let you in on one little cancer secret. There's actually no one food that if you eat one time, will cause cancer. A breast cancer survivor that started working with me a few weeks ago was terrified of food. When she was diagnosed, she was given a book on what to eat after cancer, but the book was more like what not to eat after cancer. She had read that book at such a vulnerable moment in her life. She was terrified of dying. She would have done anything to be cancer free. The book just fell into her lap, so she treated it like her cancer Bible. The problem is, is that a lot of people will tell you things just because they believe that's what's best. That absolutely does not make it fact and it doesn't make it right for you. The truth is that there are very few foods that you need to focus on minimizing to reduce your risk of cancer. The only foods that have truthfully been linked to increasing your risk of cancer are alcohol and processed meats. That's why it is much more powerful to focus on foods you need to include rather than foods you need to eliminate. It's a completely different mindset a mindset of power and control rather than a mindset of fear. I want you to feel powerful and in control, and that's why these seven foods are so important for you. The next cancer-fighting food I have to include on my list is black beans. Beans or legumes are so underutilized as a cancer-fighting food. There are a couple of reasons why they're ideal to incorporate into your food on a daily basis. Hardly anyone is eating beans or legumes on a daily basis, but here's why you should start including them. Black beans are considered a nutritional powerhouse because they're loaded with protein. Eating to your target protein levels is critical in fighting cancer. We want to build or maintain lean muscle mass on your body, and here's how you do that. Of course, you need to use exercise or movement that's grounded in strength training, but there's more to it than that. Many people mistakenly think that lifting weights or doing strength-based yoga will help you gain lean muscle mass. And it's true, these exercises will help you with that, but if you're not eating optimal protein, then the progress you make is going to be limited. Why spend hours dedicated in the gym to building lean muscle mass when you're only gonna get about 50% of the results you could be getting? Instead, use foods like black beans to hit your protein target levels and get better results. Okay, but why is lean muscle mass so important in fighting cancer? Well, keeping a healthy body weight 
has been proven to reduce your risk of cancer. But of course, maintaining a healthy body weight can be challenging. There are lots of things that make this challenging. Work demands, having kids, holidays, stress eating. So in order to support your body in the best way possible, we wanna build up your lean muscle mass. By building up your lean muscle mass, your metabolism will increase. That means just sitting here watching this video, you would actually be burning more calories. So let's bump up your protein with black beans. Okay, but when many people think about eating protein, they're thinking about eating animal-based protein sources. Steak, chicken, ground beef. But on the other hand, we also know that eating high amounts of red meat or processed meat can increase your risk of cancer. So we need to balance this. Eat enough protein, but not too much protein from red meat or processed meat. Many groups push plant-forward eating, which is actually quite science-backed when it comes to cancer. But there's a big difference between plant-forward eating and vegetarian or vegan. You do not need to become vegetarian or vegan to lower your risk of cancer. Plant-forward eating does not mean the absence of meat. You can eat a diet that is full of plants and veggies while still including some meat sources. The base of your nutrition needs to be plant-based. This has been shown to reduce your risk of cancer. However, if you still enjoy meat, it can still play a role in your nutrition. Obviously, protein is very important to reduce your cancer risk, and animal protein has the highest amount of protein per serving. Animal sources are the most straightforward and simplest way to hit your target protein. But we can balance your protein from plant-based sources, foods like black beans, with animal-based sources, foods like chicken or fish or seafood, which actually leads me to my next cancer-fighting food, fish. It's long been shown that the Mediterranean diet lowers your risk of cancer. One of the big protein sources within this diet is fish. Now, for many of you, fish might not be your favorite thing to eat. If this is you, then start with a more mild tasting fish, something like tilapia. It has a very mild flavor and quickly takes on the taste of something else it's being cooked with. Another popular choice for people trying to incorporate more fish is to eat salmon. The buttery taste of this type of fish makes it more appealing for many people. Now, if you're like me and don't feel confident cooking fish at all, then make fish your menu choice when you go out to eat. That way you can rely on someone who's a professional to prepare it and it'll taste amazing. Plus, now you're getting those cancer-fighting properties that come along with fish. Other great cancer-fighting fish are tuna, herring, halibut, or lake trout. Okay, but let's get back to more plant-based eating again with this next food, dark leafy green veggies. Lettuce, kale, spinach, the cancer-fighting properties of dark leafy greens cannot be ignored. Here's why. Research has found that carotenoids found in dark leafy greens actually have antioxidant properties. They boost the body's own antioxidant defenses, which actually stop those free radicals in your body. But it's more than that. These foods are also loaded with vitamin C, a very very powerful antioxidant for fighting cancer. These foods are also very high in fiber, flavonoids, calcium, and folate. These foods are particularly good in fighting off colorectal cancer, but also stomach and esophageal cancer. Okay, but on to cancer fighting food number five, apples. Have you ever heard an apple a day? Well, it does keep the doctor away and here's why. Apples are rich in polyphenols, which are a promising cancer fighting agent. Polyphenols work in the body by inhibiting a protein called glucose transporter 2. This protein plays a role in advanced stage cell growth in particular types of cancer cells. Something so simple as an apple a day can help fight off cancer. Apples are also high in fiber, which is known to reduce your cancer risk. Okay, but now we need to dive into the last cancer-fighting food, and this one is gonna surprise you. Many people have long thought that this food increases your cancer risk, but that is absolutely not true. We have clear evidence now that actually eating more will lower your cancer risk and help you fight off cancer. That's soy. Soy is often referred to as a phytoestrogen because it has a similar chemical structure to estrogen. Similar, but not the same. The idea at the time was that if you ate soy, it would increase your hormone levels. If you ate soy, it would potentially fuel your hormones and cause cancer to grow. Some people actually went as far as to tell perfectly healthy women who had no history of cancer to avoid soy because it might cause them to have cancer. This is not at all true. We now know that eating soy is not only safe, but it will actually 
help you fight cancer. Women who eat higher amounts of soy in their diet actually have a lower risk of being diagnosed with cancer. Personally, as an ovarian cancer survivor, I wanna make sure I lower my risk of cancer. After taking a deep dive into the literature around soy, I now actively try to eat more soy and phytoestrogens in my diet. I strongly suggest you consider doing the same. But wait, is there such a thing as too much soy? Do you need to stick to a particular amount of soy to reduce your risk of cancer while still keeping it safe? When we look at populations that eat large amounts of soy, such as Chinese breast cancer survivors, we find the answer here. Here, we're able to take a closer look at how high soy consumption impacts your cancer risk. When moderate levels of soy are compared to high levels of soy, we actually see that consuming both is quite safe. There's no upper limit on how much soy you can eat. You don't have to limit your consumption in any way. But if you're a cancer survivor, we do see that eating higher amounts of soy actually reduces your risk of a cancer recurrence. So in this case, more is actually better. But look, using food to reduce your risk of cancer is just one piece of what should be your overall plan. If you're serious about creating an anti-cancer lifestyle, then you need to be aligning your exercise to reduce your risk of cancer. That's exactly why I've linked up this next video here. Let's get into it right now. I'll see you in there.